our Wi-Fi checkup in Zion. We're at the bottom of the valley in the campground. I'm by a river, so I'm sorry if it's a little loud, but I wanted to report. Zion National Park. It's beautiful. The rocks. It feels like we're kind of in like the bottom of a canyon right now. We're in the we're in the campgrounds down at the valley. It's beautiful. It's not too hot. It's a little bit warm. Probably in the um, high 80s or so, which is a lot better than a couple nights ago when we were in the uh, 100 teens. And yeah, I'm just really appreciative that we're able to work from here right now. This is so cool. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about is our service. You know, if you're working remotely from a big city, it's not really an issue because typically you have a lot of Wi-Fi, you've got a lot of connectivity, especially if you're staying in Airbnbs or hotels. We're not. We're staying on our camper, which means that we have to rely on a couple of creative options. So we have a couple of these. This is the Verizon. Uh, it's called the Jetpack. And what it does is it effectively broadcasts a cell signal hotspot of Wi-Fi to a small little radius wherever you are. Think of it like a, a cell phone where you're tethered to your cell phone except it's really, really a lot more powerful than your cell phone. That said, that doesn't necessarily mean that we still have service everywhere we go because it relies on the cell towers and Verizon doesn't cover uh, service everywhere in the country, at least not perfectly. And where that's most evident is definitely out in the national parks. So we have not only the Verizon Jetpack, we also have another device. It's called a Nighthawk. And it's more of a multi-purpose device that can be used on all the different networks. Right now we have a plan with T-Mobile and we are actually considering getting a backup plan through AT&T. So we'll talk a little bit about what the differences in the plans are but I wanted to highlight that so far on this trip, we've been to a bunch of national parks in Texas, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, and now we're in Utah. And we've only had one day where our connectivity was a little bit of an issue. We had to drive a bit out of our way and find a Walmart where we could connect to the Wi-Fi. We made it work. It wasn't too big of a problem, but we had to wake up early and get on the road so we could find connectivity to the internet before um, our day started. So that's a little bit of an overview of the devices that we have. Again, this is the Verizon Jetpack. It works really well. Right now I'm paying about $15 a month for 30 gigabytes of high-speed 5G connectivity. It works real simple. You just turn it on and connect to it like it's a Wi-Fi network. The other one is the Nighthawk. Uh, it's a bit bigger of a device. It has a little bit more power and it works with all of the big networks. And th for that, we're paying $50 a month through T-Mobile for 100 gigabytes of, of data. Now that sounds like a lot of data, but when you're on Zoom calls and streaming things for the from the internet for work, it adds up very quickly. Uh, I think we figured out that Holly, on her own, uses about seven to 10 gigabytes of data per day, per working day. So we go through it through it quickly and we try to jump on wi local Wi-Fi networks whenever we can rather than using our data. But we have these as our backup or whenever we're more remote, like at a campground that doesn't have Wi-Fi. We are so lucky. How cool is this? Our Wi-Fi checkup in Zion. We're at the bottom of the valley in the campground. I'm by a river, so I'm sorry if it's a little loud, but I wanted to report that we actually have really good coverage here. 
both our T-Mobile and our Verizon service are streaming, no problem. We were able to get on Zoom calls, stream Netflix last night. Zion gets an A. That said, I will say, on the road down, uh, with a lot of the switchbacks and up by the tunnel, we didn't have any service. We couldn't even text out and get in touch with Holly's parents. So it definitely is location dependent while you're in the park. At the campgrounds, at least, we don't have any problems. So that's a good thing. If you're interested in these devices and more details about our plans and what we've been using while we're on the road for working, uh, we'll have all of that information in the notes below and links to where you can purchase those if you're interested in them. Uh, we did a lot of research before we bought anything and I think we made the right choices because we've had not a whole lot of trouble with these guys.